Do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Robert? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. My father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and said, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I ask him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money or that they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says an employee doesn't have to know anything about money because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. He says, the moment you accept the paycheck, your brain goes dead. You know, he just bought, he just got paid. He says, as long as you're hungry, you'll think. And he was a great, great teacher. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day, I got upset. I said, well, when are you going to teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? <laughs> we're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. There's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them, but one of the best ones found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. But is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii, and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly acquired assets and they became bigger assets. That property wasn't that big at the time, so he had to buy out all the small guys. Because Waikiki was a little dirt water little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I... just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. So that was the end of my school years because I understood what a fake teacher is. A fake teacher is somebody who just wants a job and they'll teach anything. You know, they teach how to shine shoes if you pay them more money. But they really don't know what they're teaching. For example, my calculus teacher, I was at, went to military school in New York and um, 
I asked the teacher, I said, you know, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever going to use this stuff? He goes, no. You know, I said, why do you teach it? I says, because I get paid. I said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why, you know, I, you have to, in life, one of the things I suggest to people, you got to find a real teacher versus a fake teacher. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So, and, and then when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn this when your poor dad, a PhD, did it? And the answer is very simply, my rich dad was like, my best friend's father. His father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, sometimes a blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. I've had f financial crashes. I've had people stab me in the back. But they're all good because I grow from it. That's spirituality. Right? You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes like they teach in school, they don't ever grow. Because spirituality is there's good and there's bad. There's right and there's wrong. There's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right. They only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that. That's not reality. Every time I failed, it was like, good. I said, okay, what have I learned? And the average person, the reason they're poor is they haven't failed. You know, they play it so safe. They haven't made any mistakes like they taught in school. That means they don't learn anything. That's why the school system is actually fundamentally corrupt. It's anti-education. But when they say, I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. And I made so many people, I don't, I can't afford it. You think I made a money? Your mom used time. to say that. Your mom used to say that. My dad. Your dad. My PhD dad, he says, what do you think I am? Made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape. You know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I can't go to the gym. You know, when you, when you could go to the gym, but no, I can't. Truth is, I'm just too lazy. And your rich dad used to say what instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take or why should I do that? He says that a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down and you become what you say. But the thing is, is that we become creatures of our own habits. And until we break the habit, we don't change. Mm -hmm. And so the people right now who are sitting at home, <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing, it was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. There's more information out there than ever. We've got the YouTube, we've got internet, everything. Are people better educated about money? No, they're worse off. I mean, you know, I have a, my little Rich Dad radio show and tomorrow I'm interviewing these team of, I think they're educational psychiatrists and they're, they're, the book is, their book is called Coddling of the American Mind. It's how they're making, how our school systems are making our students weaker. So in school, they have these things called now trigger effects. So you can't, as a teacher, you can't say anything that might upset the student. They don't want anything that might jar their point of view. So everybody's gonna be PC, you know, politically correct now. And it's killing us. It's killing the brains of our kids. They're going backwards. But in their minds, they're more enlightened. You know, they might be. But if I, don't, if I didn't have ideas that shook me, I wouldn't learn anything new. So that's kind of the story. And you know, I play I play a Monopoly in real life. Uh, I don't need a job. I don't have a retirement. Don't need a retirement. 
I don't want the government to take care of them. 